Welcome to the first Monmouth Park Brad Thomas blog of the 2012 racing season. Last year and the year before we did a blog in written form. We're going to try something different this year with a video blog. Over the weekend last, Monmouth Park opened its racing for the season. I thought the, the dirt uh, was slightly closer favoring around one turn on dirt on Saturday, slightly speed favoring sprinting on Sunday. The one thing in common though about the dirt, the two things actually, Firstly, two-turn racing was all speed on dirt. Three races on Saturday, one on Sunday. As far as position on the track, the second thing that was in common on both days, inside pairs, absolutely excellent. Outside, all the way movers were compromised beyond just the mere loss of ground. On turf, things played similarly both days. Speed was very good, and the inside pairs played especially well. Reviewing some of the action, on Saturday, in race number two, first time starter, third finishing deep seat tail, was off slow, moved up, eased back on the turn, then made a good, a good middle move. He showed multiple gears. I thought he ran very well with very little foundation. He has big upside as a Jersey bred maiden. In race number three, runner up, smoking gold, had to alter the course a couple of times. She might have won the race with a smoother journey. In race number four, Raro, a maiden uh, $25,000 claiming victress on turf, showed excellent acceleration on the second turn. I think she's one that could win a couple races on the green this year, spotted properly with that ability to uh, accelerate. Third finisher, Hornet's Nest, had traffic on the backstretch and again in the stretch. When she gets clearance, and I think she really prefers to do her running outside, she can really finish well against this kind. In race number five, speeding again was a first-time starter, Victor for conditioner Pat McBurney. Uh, he did his winning on dirt, but he has plenty of sneaky turf on both sides of his pedigree and a long loping grass stride. This barn knows what to do with a grass horse. Don't be surprised if speeding again ultimately has his uh, most career success on the turf course. In race number six, sixth place finishing no fret was close early met some traffic into the turn, then steadied rather hard and dropped back, losing all position at that point, and then actually finished decently thereafter. Much more persevering effort than is accustomed, at least in the past, for no fret. When he's outside, though, that's where he really wants to be. He gets brave. No fret with the A of the then ranks for Jersey Brett's looking weaker than ever this year. Uh, might very well have an upset shot in the immediate future. In race number seven, runner-up Demitas looked very, very sharp in the post parade and ran to that sharpness with a good second place finish. I think she's a filly on the improve. Race number eight, Farmer Jones finished second off the bench at 17 to one for Ben Perkins Jr. What really impressed me about this horse was the way he changed leads relatively on time in early stretch. In the past, he was very late changing leads if he changed leads at all. Could be a sign that Farmer Jones is learning the hang, or the non-hang, if you will, of the game. In race number nine, Small Town Talk improved big time at 19 to 1 and did it on the dry surface. Excellent middle move before faltering late off a layoff. This horse is even better on a wet track, too. Pay attention to him if he gets moisture in the surface. Jersey Kiss, also off a mini layoff, was a deceptively very good fifth at 13 to 1. Made a good middle move against pace while very wide. This horse with the right setup, meaning plenty of pace, can definitely upset a comparable field. Race number 10, only three horses finished. That was the race that was marred by the spill miraculously. No serious injuries, and that's a fantastic thing. Frequently in these spills, the ones that look the worst often turn out the best, and thankfully that was the case in the Decathlon Stakes. Ponzi Scheme won off the bench for trainer Juan Saray. Ponzi Scheme was super last year, going long for conditioner Saray. Never really sprinted before in his life, but he sprinted so well here, I think he would have won the race even without the... Uh, the, uh, the spill and the, uh, and the lost riders. Ponzi scheme, though, now has versatility to win around one turn and two and could be uh, ready for a really big season. Moving on to Sunday. Race number two, Private Mark, a fifth place finisher at 22 to one off a of layoff, showed his usual good route speed and really hung in pretty bravely for a horse with no foundation until well into the stretch before he faltered. I think with that conditioning behind him, he can hold on a lot better next time at a price still. 
In race number three, Chewala, the third finisher, was off slow, made a quick move up, steadied along in traffic, dropped back, made another move, continued game late. Horse like this who makes multiple runs early in his career, going a distance like five and a half furlongs when uh, hurt by traffic woes, I think can really improve big time with an outside draw and a stretch to six when he can actually make the lead. In race number four, Stormy Jojo triumphed for maiden $10,000 for trainer Terry Pompey, but Stray Bell, the fifth finisher, who was against the grain of the track, finished deceptively decently with a uh, pacier situation. I think he has a chance to upset next time out for an underrated barn. In race number five, third finisher, So Where Friends, was badly compromised by both the pace of the race and the grain of the track. He finished very well, though, in a much improved performance at 28 to 1. Certainly, when he gets pace at any time this summer, he's a dangerous horse at a price. And I think he might even be able to go two turns, two and sit a little bit closer when he does. In race six, Uncle Harry, who showed improved speed last time out, broke slowly on Sunday, was hung wide all the way, losing ground and also against the grain of the course. In a race that was actually dominated by the front runner, he can improve big time with a better break and a more tactical journey. Candy Mint, a, New a candy mine, a New Jersey bred, who uh, is probably better on turf than dirt, but just can't find a New Jersey bred spot on that surface on the local grounds. Ran deceptively well, finishing decently while caught inside and never really having full clearance and deep stretch. If he finds a uh, field with a lot of pace in it, whether it's turf or dirt, he might actually have a chance to get involved at a price. In race number eight, Gypsy Preacher was hung very wide all the way, made a good middle move against the grain of the course in another turf race in which uh, Speed was able to control things. She certainly has the ability to beat a field like this. She did switch back, though, to her incorrect left lead in the stretch once she got tired with a little bit more professionalism and a little bit smoother journey. Gypsy Preacher can get out of this condition. And in race number nine, Blue Air for claiming $12,500, returning to her favorite track of Mammoth, broke from the one post, not where she wants to be. She's a very long striding mare, even though she's a sprinter. She really did not have room to maneuver, but ran very well once she was able to extricate herself from traffic. Certainly, if she's able to uh, get clear of horses, she will be very, very tough when she runs next. And indeed, she is in this coming Sunday, dropping down all the way to the basement, $5,000. But unfortunately, for the long striding mare who likes room to maneuver, she has drawn the one post again. That should be interesting. And in race number 11, Crafty Star finished second at 10 to 1 off a long layoff for condition of Michael Mullen. Very interesting trainer who hit the board and even won uh, a couple times last season, frequently at big prices, is a horse that I would pay attention to. Not a horse necessarily to pay attention to, but a trainer to pay attention to. Last year, Mullins horses did better into their form uh, cycles. Crafty Star running so well off the bench might be an indication that Mullins' pattern is changing. Whether horses are fresh for him or into their form cycles, good workouts are often an indication of a good performance coming up. Just a couple quick notes about horses uh, and the venues they were coming from. Atlantic City race horses, Meadowlands race horses at both those tracks abbreviated turf meet outran their odds opening weekend at Monmouth Park. Parks and Penn National horses did so as well on the dirt. The horses who disappointed me were the Tampa Bay race horses who did not do as well as they did in recent years. We'll find out more when we have more races, whether or not that's a long-term trend or a short-term trend. But the Tampa Bay racing last uh, this winter was not quite as good as it had been in previous years. Some trainers to pay attention to briefly who were live opening weekend. Pat McBurney looked like he's cranked up for early in the season. Ben Perkins Jr. was second off a long layoff. That's often the, a sign that his barn is going to be rolling early. Tim Hills did not win, but had three second place finishes. Everything he's running looks like it's ultra live. Two of Hills' runner-up finishes, too, were off many layoffs. Russell Cash has been going great guns for the last two years. His horses off layoffs uh, look like they're firing uh, this season. And Charlie Harbat, the uh, Tampa Bay raced over the course of the winter, had a sneaky good year last year, was second at 15 to 1 over the weekend. His horses in the last couple of years have run well early in the Monmouth Park season.